this is your story too. What do you mean, Dad? Well, what you do can make Jehovah happy. Love. Is it gone? Have we lost it? Is it the possession of the wealthy? The strong? Or is it somewhere else? At the 2019 convention of Jehovah's Witnesses, you will learn what real love is, where to find it, how to show it, and have it shown in return. God cares deeply about you, and He wants you to know that in this hate-filled world, love can be found. It is not lost, and that love will never fail. These 13 men and women grew up as Jehovah's Witnesses. How many of you are telling your story for the first time on television? I feel honored to be in this room with all of these survivors. Now all adults and living in different cities, we brought them together in California for the largest television group interview of its kind. How many of you have thought about harming yourself? Oh my. None of us had to be, it could have been, I could have had a different life. Since I was six. Cameron Torres says he and his mom told the leadership of his congregation, men known as elders, about being sexually abused. And the elders didn't do anything. They said we would look into this, we'll, you know, we'll take care of it, we'll leave it in God's hands. And it's been a quarter century and they haven't done anything. This organization is a culture that doesn't protect our children. It's dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. You were silenced. Megan Lynn is a fifth generation Jehovah's Witness who lives in California and spoke to us without her family's knowledge or approval. And then I hope to God they understand that I love them and I'm not doing this because I hate them. I'm doing this because I love children and I want them to be safe and this is the only way for them to be safe for us to put ourselves in the yes. front lines. Even if it costs you your family. Yes. More than a million followers of the religion hand out literature or have gone door to door trying to convince more people of an approaching apocalypse and that in the resurrection only true believers will be saved by Jehovah, their name for God. In a statement to the National Investigative Unit and in literature from May published online, the Jehovah's Witnesses call child abuse an especially repugnant, wicked deed and say elders endeavor to comply with laws requiring allegations of child abuse be reported to authorities. But our investigation found that is not always true. Avoiding the police, followers, elders, memos, and hundreds of pages of court transcripts reveal was the expectation from the very top of the organization, now headquartered here about an hour north of New York City. These internal letters and documents from headquarters dating back 30 years directed its 13,000 congregations across the country to handle abuse claims internally, to send copies of files to headquarters, not police, in special blue envelopes, and to destroy documents laying out past policy. Have you seen this letter dated July 1st, 1989? Yes, this is the one about confidentiality. Roger Bentley says he read and followed the written orders when he was a longtime elder. He now says he was blinded by the religion. By learning of child abuse, the, even an allegation and not reporting it, that is covering up child abuse. That's not a tough question. So if you had called the police, would it have been like going against God's word? Sure, yes, yes. So it would be almost unthinkable for you to disobey the governing body and call the authorities. Correct. I was complicit with an organization that really had a bad policy towards child sexual abuse. Now authorities want to know more about that policy. 
The National Investigative Unit contacted the offices of all 50 state attorneys general in the United States. We've learned at least three have been looking into the Jehovah's Witnesses, contacting whistleblowers and followers who allege abuse. In Delaware, which reached a settlement with a congregation in the city of Laurel to pay more than $19,000 and take a Stewards of Children training program after its elders failed to report alleged child abuse to authorities in violation of the state's mandatory reporter law. The congregation did not admit liability in that settlement. In California, which sent an investigator to meet with an alleged victim north of Los Angeles in April, who tells us she was threatened by elders with disfellowship if she reported her alleged abuser. And in Pennsylvania, which has now interviewed at least one person who alleges abuse when he was a child. Those interviews could be the precursor to opening a formal investigation or grand jury probe. According to documents we've obtained, a Pennsylvania Attorney General Senior Supervisory Special Agent looking into some of the allegations is Gary Talent, the same child predator section investigator who helped lead the state's blockbuster probe into the Catholic Church that last year revealed 301 priests accused of abusing 1,000 children. Those same Pennsylvania investigators could now seek access to a secret Jehovah's Witness database of accused abusers filled with reports sent to the organization in those special blue envelopes. How do you think the public would react if they saw that database? Erwin Zalkin is an attorney in San Diego. It's disturbing. In what way? There are a lot of children that are being affected very, very badly. You mean molested? Yeah. Abused? Yeah. You seem a little emotional about it. Yeah, it's hard to know what's in that and not be able to talk about it. Zolkin can't talk about it because of a California judge's ruling shielding the records from public view, for now. Zolkin's firm, which has also represented Catholic abuse victims, got a decade's worth of documents after a years-long legal battle. But despite a court order, the Jehovah's Witnesses organization is still fighting, appealing to heavily redact the files. You're saying that the Jehovah's Witness organization has been more defiant than the Catholic Church? Yes. So the Pope has complied, but the Jehovah's Witness Church has not? Right. Zalkin's team, which is believed to represent the largest number of alleged Jehovah's Witness abuse victims of any firm in the country, about three dozen, is now asking a judge to sanction the organization for the delays. Lawmakers aren't waiting. In California, a bill passed by the Senate would strip away clergy penitent privilege, requiring religious leaders of all faiths to report alleged child sex abuse. Twelve states have such a requirement, leaving 38 states with less protection for victims. This exemption has caused a lot of abuse of children. We need to stop it. State Senator Jerry Hill is the bill's sponsor. What we want to do is protect children, and that's what this bill does. How many of you support this type of a bill? Everyone. For the 13 former Jehovah's Witnesses we interviewed, their pain has now become a warning. It makes me sick thinking of all the children that are still in there right. yeah, every single yeah. day. It's because of the abuse here, I choose to make poor decisions in life. We need to protect our children. Yeah, we, have yes. we, we, we have an we obligation to our children. In Sacramento, California, I'm Chief National Investigative Correspondent Mark Albert.